Moon an Energy founder, motivation, motivational speaker, and author. The Amuna Or Energy Institute, one of the first Haskama approved energy healing certification programs, enables Jewish women and men to practice a permissible version of energy healing through Amuna. After being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis 15 years ago, Amuna was the answer to Orit Esther's personal healing, growth, and building a solid foundation with Hashem. So much so, Orit Esther wanted to serve God daily, redirecting her culinary chef career towards a more meaningful path of spreading Amuna in souls. Her goal is to ignite the lives of Jewish women, men, teenagers, and families worldwide. Orit Esther is the two-time book author of the Turnaround series, Torah-based feel-good books. Traveling to speak to thousands of people, her widespread Torah classes on Torah anytime and online have built up a reputation for Orit as a recognizable voice, encouraging all to see Hashem's hand in everything that we do. And it is a great privilege to have you here with us today. Thank you, Orit. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to this entire group. Thank you to Nomi. Um, once again, very, very humbled and privileged to be here, uh, to be with you all. And Bezat Hashem, uh, we'll share together um, some wisdom that Hashem sends down to us. And Bezat Hashem, Hashem Hashem Naseven Atzliach, and it should stand as a schut for all those here, all those listening, all those who will hear later. Uh, for Kla Yisrael, for everyone in the in the world, for peace, for harmony, for Geula, for health, for happiness. I have so many people roaming around in my mind as I'm speaking, and I'm thinking about um, all the names that roam through my mind of the people who are in need of Yeshua and Nechamad. Bezat Hashem, may it be your will, Hashem, that this should stand as a schut for them, for all of us, for redemption. Barachamim, redemption's coming, but it should be Barachamim Gluim, revealed kindness Be'ezrat Hashem Be'karov Mamash 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 Karov Amen um, So let's talk a little bit about where we are So I called today's um, topic entitled Happy Me Free Me uh, One of the main reasons is because I'm in the midst Tonight is our second out of the three day class program called Happy Me Free Me um, You're welcome to still join at any time and catch up with recordings um, it's a very special program because it really um, is talking about the uh, the psyche, the Jewish psyche, and the psyche and the energy in the world in general, and how we're traveling slowly, slowly into this uh, this area of redemption in our mind, and body, and soul. And um, I just think it's important for all of us to really tap in, Be'ezat Hashem, to as much of this energy. It's so interesting because one of the participants wrote me a couple of days ago and she says, it's so interesting what's happening to me. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm recognizing the energies and I'm, I'm tapping into it and I'm seeing things open, freeing. You know, if we, if we could just tap into understanding how Hashem gives us with these moments in time um, where he says, now, here, you want to redeem yourself? Here, go, jump in, jump in. You're, you're going to be standing by that water soon, by that Yam Suf, you know? tap into it get get into uh you know the mode of of redemption because it's happening and as we've discussed before the cleaning the physical aspects of cleaning are not it's not just the physical the physical works with the soul and the soul works with the physical this is our time for freedom we left the mindset the mindset of purim Hashem needed to give us a boost and had us read. He had us speak the Megillah, read the Megillah, listen to the Megillah. The Megillah is also an Haggadah. It also, Lahagid, it also tells us and Megale, Megillah from the word Legalot, reveals to us the story of our lives, albeit in a hidden form, whereas in Pesach, everything's revealed. Everything's open. Everything's being shown to us. But Hashem said, first, let me show you the hidden ways into which I act, interact with you. And, and know that even if you don't see me readily, I want you to tap in and remember what was revealed to you in the Megillat Estel. 
in that story of hiddenness. I want you to remember what was told to you then. And then as we're going through the month, obviously we're one week into that month, but as we go through that month, Hashem says, I want you to slowly, slowly begin to unravel for yourself how bonded you really are, how bonded we really are with him. And we shouldn't forget that. We should always have that at the, in the back of the resources of, of our mind. And Hashem is teaching us in these weeks, leading us to Pesach. But again, even this program, Happy Me, Free Me, is something that teaches us a three-step transformational program based on the Baal Shem Tov that we can use at any moment in time throughout the year. Um, it's, it's about redeeming those parts of self that are crying there are still parts within us that are crying out to Hashem and waiting to be sealed and bonded and and um, and be redeemed from Mitzrayim. We have, we have to understand that those moments of tzarut, of feeling crushed, of feeling limited, of, of feeling broken, feeling like, oh my, everything's closing in narrowing into me. My mind can't think straightly. I feel squished. It's too much. It's overwhelming. My heart is constricted. I don't know. Should I go into numbness and just push it aside? Or, or should I expand and feel those those, those, that, those incidents, incidents, incidences of my life of pain? What are we supposed to do with all of this? And Hashem says that every time we meet those areas in our lives, where we feel so constricted, so out of control, so in conflict. There's a part of me that says, no, 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 Hashem loves me. Of course, he's going to redeem me. Of course, he's going to take me out of this. And there's another part that says, no, but don't you see? Aren't you logically looking at the circumstances of your life? And don't you realize this is one, one, one step too deep that, that you're in? I don't know how you're going to get out of this one. No logical way of being able to get out of this one. And Hashem says, I want you to be in that conflict and still find me. And that's what we're doing when we're organizing and we're searching those crevices. We think we're looking for hamits. Hamits are all those places that are basically have distanced us away from Hashem. So as we're physically cleaning, I want us all to think to ourselves and we're physically looking, of course, at the same time to organize those areas, those closets, those I, I, I don't need this. I do need that. We're doing that in our nefesh. We're doing that within ourselves. And we're resolving conflicts. And we, we're not even paying attention that that's what we're actually doing. And so Hashem says, I want you to go into those places of your Mitzrayim. I want you to reveal to yourself those places that you forgot about me. I want you to revisit and retell the stories of your pain to yourself and maybe to others. The whole mitzvah of Pesach is Pesach, is to speak. And we're going to go into this for just a moment, uh, you know, today to recognize how important it is that soul power, the soul garment that Hashem gave to us, the power of speech, of retelling your story. But first, Hashem says, I want you to treasure those broken pieces. I want you to treasure the, the battle that you're going through because it's in the battle that you bring me into it when you bring godly consciousness into that battle and you say, where are you, Hashem, in here? I know you're here. I know you're going to redeem me out of this. But where are you right now? Right now, as I'm in the pain, as I'm in the desert, where are you? So Hashem is, is sending us messages through the story of the broken luchot, of the shattered tablets. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe is the symbol of da'at of knowingness, of reassurance, knowing that Hashem is always with us. But yet he comes down and he sees us with the golden calf. And I say, yes, we, we, every single one of us, we were there. Sparks of our consciousness still need to be redeemed from that place. So every time we're broken, we're, we're part of the all that whole story of the slavery, of the exodus, of receiving the Torah. We're constantly reliving it in our minute places and experiences and the triggers of our life. And so Moshe Rabbeinu comes down, he sees us in our wrongdoing, in our shortcoming, in those broken places where we've distanced ourselves from Hashem. 
and he takes wisdom, he takes Torah, he takes the essence of all that, those suggestions and, and pieces of advice and, and, and connection to Hashem, and they're broken, and they become broken right in front of us, and those are the moments when we're looking down and we see our shattered self, it's because we're looking at the broken tablets. But Hashem sends us such a profound message in the broken tablets. Hashem says, wait a minute. Now we're going to go ahead and we did our tshuva, Baruch Hashem. We, 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 we went ahead and we recognized, we took responsibility in knowing that we had traveled far from Hashem. And then what does Hashem do? The most profound instruction he gives to Moshe Rabbeinu. He says, I want you to take those broken tablets and I want you to put it in one ark. And I want you to take the new found tablet, so to speak, the new story after the healing, after the tshuva, when we're whole, the whole tablets, put them in another ark and carry both of them for all the years in the desert. And I, and I want you while you're in your midbar, when you're speaking, midbar from the word dibu, when you're speaking the story of your life throughout those 40 years of rebirthing yourself, and as you're entering, slowly treading towards the promised land, the ultimate place of freedom, I want you to keep remembering to speak on those places of brokenness because both are traveling with you. You reside in the middle. We hold two consciousnesses all the time. And we have to be okay with that. I have to be okay with my moments of imperfections. And I have to be okay with my moments of perfection. I have to be okay with the moments that I fall. And I have to be okay with the moments that I'm, that I'm rising, rising above with Hashem's help and compassion. And both are treasured. And both are valued. And both are meaningful to Hashem. He wants us to speak and that's the whole idea of, right? Right? All those who speak about it are pray. The more you speak about it, the more lengthy your, your words of speaking about your brokenness and your moments of rehabilitation, it's praiseworthy in front of Hashem. It's what Hashem cherishes. So all this time frame right now of this Haggadah, we're practicing speech from this point up until Pesach. We need to speak. That's one of the things we do a lot. You know, I teach a lot in, in the program. Speak about your pain. Talk about it to Hashem. Not just in Heat Buddha Dude. While you're washing dishes, that's also a small version of Heat Buddha Dude. Talk about it. Say, Hashem, hey, I'm really going through a hard time. Do you not say I'm a shmata here? I'm a dust rag. I'm falling apart. Can you collect me? Can you collect my, my, my moments here? Can you collect my scattered brain here? Put it together. Make sense out of it all for me. I need redemption. I'm feeling crushed. I'm feeling in slavery. What happens to a slave? A slave has no right to speak unless his master tells him, speak up. Every time we hold ourselves back from speaking, we're essentially back in Mitzrayim because we're not feeling that we're worthy enough to say, speak our minds and say, speak our pain and talk about the things that really bother us. We don't feel like we have the right to speak out to Hashem and say to him, Hashem, look, I'm having a really, really hard time. But like I said before, the whole idea of speech is what took us out of Mitzrayim. By Yitzhakul Hashem, we didn't get redeemed until we didn't yell out to Hashem. And so because we know that the template of Mitzrayim and the template of the exile of, of Egypt is what is where we learn. It's where we get our tools from in order to be able to get redeemed further, God willing, to the ultimate redemption. Because we know how important that is, and Pesach and Hag, he got it you tell it to your children, you tell your children, talk, speak, you give them candies all night long, you say, you know, you, you ask them to ask the questions, we beg them to speak up, we want to hear their voices, we want to talk about it. There's a mitzvah to even say the seder to ourselves if we have no one else to share it with them, if that's the case, God forbid, or or that's the situation, right? The idea is to speak, speak out your heart as you're cleaning out. Don't forget to talk to Hashem. Hashem, you know, I'm organizing my closet, but what I really need to do is I need to organize the closet of my mind, of my heart. You know, there are moments in my life, as you're cleaning, as you're taking out your dust red, talk to Hashem. Speak to Him. Ask Him to organize things in your mind. Ask Him to piece you back together. He's got the best crazy glue in the entire universe. 
He gets to piece us all back together. The Ramchal writes something so sweet, so sweet. Just drink this in. The Ramchal writes in the Ma'amar Chochmah, he writes, every time that we speak what was, what is, what was, our pain over potentially what's going to be. He says that every time, because we didn't, so to speak, fulfill all 400 years in Mitzrayim, we got a break of, you know, we, he, Hashem did us a favor and he sort of broke it down and he said, I'm going to cut it short. He says, well, what happened to those years? Those years of slavery, so to speak, still need to kind of be lived out. The Ramchal writes, every time we speak to Hashem about what we experience in our brokenness, the slave-like mentality where we feel unworthy, where we feel like the redemption's not coming, where we feel that, God forbid, you know, we have no right to speak up to the master of the universe. We have no right to say to him, get us out of this exile already. Can you please just shorten, shorten it up a little bit here? You know, reveal your compassion. We know your compassion in hand. Can you reveal it to us so that our eyes, our heart, our body, we can experience it? We want to see it. We want to see your Yad Rama. We want to see your, 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 you know, your, your strong hand. And we want to, we want to know that you and only you are taking Aniva Lo Saraf. It's, it's you, Hashem, that's taking me out of my Mitzrayim. The Ramchal says that every time you re experience those moments of pain, talk about it. And you yell to Hashem, you are drawing in the energy of redemption. And you are pushing out the energy of exile. And that's how we can quicken up the pace. That's how we can get us out of Mitzrayim. If we just speak and speak and speak more and more and more. Don't feel oppressed. Don't live a slave like a slave-like mentality where you feel that you have no right to speak to your master. Well, your master, Hashem Yidbach Shemol Ad, Hashem wants to hear from every single one of us. We're of the Hashem. We are the, the servants of Hashem. Hashem gives us full range to speak to Him. He wants us to speak to Him. He wants us to beg Him to take us out of Mitzrayim. Now, I just want to end off by saying one last thing. We said before that Moshe Rabbeinu represents Dat. You know, we hear so much and I teach it. Thank you, Hashem. He gives me the absolute rachamim. He pours rachamim on me that he enables me to be able to teach this to women and men all around the world. Mindfulness. That's what we're hearing about. Everyone's talking about mindfulness and awareness and consciousness. And we're learning about epigenetics and how the whole idea of changing our genes can come from changing the consciousness. Everything we're speaking about right here, reinventing the wheel, reinventing the perception, tap into quantum physics, the observer's, uh, observer's effect, and being able to see our reality from a completely bird's eye view and godly vision. That changes our lives. That changes the biochemistry that flows in your blood. It changes the way your organs secrete, you know, whatever it needs to, to do in order to send the messages out. It changes the ne ne neural pathways in the brain, neuroplasticity. It changes the way your brain actually thinks. When you decide to see light in the situation and you decide to shed new light, godly light and purpose into everything that's going on into life. But we know, obviously, that this is the whole symbol of Moshe Rabbeinu. We know this is the key of freedom. We don't need science to tell us that. And yet, look at this. I always say this because I feel like this is so empowering, right? Paro, if you take the, the, the letters of the word paro, pe, resh, I, and he, it also spells oref, Hashem, the neck of Hashem. Just switch the letters around. Play some Scrabble here. That's that was one of the uh, the beautiful ways that that Baal, the Baal Shem Tov Hakadosh would bring about redemption for those who came and seek to help. He would change the letters, the order of the letters of that which they were experiencing, and he would be able to get them to see the other side, the other angle of their situation, and thereby they would experience redemption. And healing by just changing the way that they look at the same circumstances. You look at the same circumstance, you say, oh, wait a minute, these are black glasses? Okay, let me, oh, my pink glasses, they're right here. Okay, let me go get my pink glasses. Let me put them on. 
oh, now everything's like hunky-dory. It just looks so pink and beautiful and nice. And, and that's literally how we could, and the one of the ways that we do that is by using the mechanism of our mouth. Paro and Oref Hashem, when we, God forbid, turn our back on Hashem, that's Paro. Paro means I'm turning my neck around. What does it mean, my back? What is it? What is the neck? The, when you see somebody's neck, you can't really recognize who they are. When you see somebody's back, you can't really tell, well, is that my neighbor or is that my friend's neighbor or who is that? How can you tell a person from a person when you see their face? Panim from the word pnimiut. That's the whole Torah, the Baal Shem Tov. It's the pnimiut so I could see the panim of Hashem, right? But what does Paro do? He turns us around, so to speak. He gets us to, so to speak, see as if the Ahorayim, God forbid, the back of Hashem. And, and everything's in the back. You know, people who suffer from neck aches, one of the first things I ask them when I do energy work or I'm, I'm trying to coach them through, I, I, I say to them, like, how much of your life is, is translated into seeing the pnimiut, seeing going deep, deep into the situations of your life. How much do you see Hashem in it? Do you, do you work on it? I mean, obviously, none of us can really get to that ultimate level, but do we work on it? Do we yearn for it? Do we want it? Do we scream? So how do you fix it? How do you fix seeing Hashem, so to speak, from the back? And now I, I do. You know what? I yearn. I want to see Hashem now in the front. How do you do that? Turn yourself around and use your mouth. Your mouth is not in your back of your head. Your mouth is in the front. So every time you use your mouth, you're facing Hashem. When you want to speak to someone, I'm not going to speak to them like this and speak to them in the while they're in the back of me. I'm going to turn myself around. So if you want to turn yourself around and you want to see Hashem, so to speak, more so, Obviously, none of us could speak and see the face of Hashem. But if we want to be more in contact with the Pneumius and the insight and the depth of what's going on and have more of a frontal conversation with Hashem, speak to Him. Because every time we ignore, we don't speak to Hashem. It's like we're sending a message to Hashem as though we're ignoring Him. So one of the ways, that's why, the, one of the ways that we could really see Hashem's hand in the broken areas of our lives is by speaking. And we need to speak a lot during these weeks. We need to speak a lot, speak to Hashem every moment that you possibly can, especially during these weeks. Speak to Hashem, that is your ticket out of Mitzrayim. And even if you think, I'm just speaking, I'm speaking, speaking Hashem's not speaking back, Hashem has infinite ways of being able to speak back to us. He sends us books. He sends us classes. He sends us friends. He sends us articles. He sends us all kinds of different ways. Suddenly, we're passing by and we hear, you know, happen chance. We hear two people talking in the background. I open up my window and suddenly I hear my neighbor, not that I'm looking to eavesdrop, and I hear them talking about something. This is the way that Hashem communicates back to us through the circumstances of our lives. He sends us the message. That's the bat kol. That's the voice of the daughter speaking back and answering back and bezat Hashem enabling us to hear the messages that we so badly need in order to understand more of the reasons as to what to do with the circumstance of how to get out of our Mitzrayim. And bezat Hashem, may we all be zocha to hear that voice we should hear the soft, gentle voice of Hashem and the Shrinte and Kutchabrihu together, speaking together as mother and father, as male and female, infused together, sending us those messages of what we need to hear in order to get out of Mitzrayim. And may this be with all that, that the speech and the talk and the Dat Moshe and the Dat Elokim that comes to us. May this be the final screaming out to Hashem that finally, finally takes us, every single one of you, every single one of us, every single person in the universe should experience their ultimate personal redemption. And as we experience piece by piece by piece by piece our personal redemption, Be'ezrat Hashem, Hashem, finally bring out, sign on the dotted line, bring us out of our Mitzrayim, and we should enjoy together dancing with the Sefer, Sifrei Torah and the Beta Mikdash finally, readily, speedily in our days, 
בעזרת השם ברחמים גדולים וגלויים במהרה בימינו, אמן. Amen. Orit, you are amazing. I have to say you were so passionate and I, it's just what I needed to hear. I'm sure all of us. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. And I, do you have a few minutes if anybody has questions? Yes, I do. I do okay. have. Okay. Dear women, does anybody have a question for Orit? Or just words of encouragement we can all share with one another. I think that's... Yeah. I want to tell you, Arit, you're a gift to Hashem and Thank to all of us. Thank you, Hashem. This is, this is an, all the miracles. Amen for it's all of us. You have amazing power to help other people. Thank you, Hashem. You know, they say, Me You know, when, you, when, when you've been through and you're going through the Amuna boot camp, you can understand the pain of others and then and from our own ashes we, we will rise we will rise together because we all know what it feels like to be in pain and i feel i feel the pain i feel the pain very intensely and we just have to stick together and rise together we will do this we will do this we will show hashem we will we will do this you know, Arid, i feel like my own yetsahara like purim and now it's like stronger than ever like, you know, it's it's amazing how it just comes and sur surges up. So thank you. Thank you for this. Please, Hashem. You give, you've given me us tools for how to deal with it. There's a lot to share. I'm inviting everybody to also join the Or Talk podcast, right? We... We, and and in any of the retreats that are coming up also, I have a bunch of retreats coming up, God willing, in May, in Israel, in L.A., in New York. You know, let's let's do this together. Please, Hashem, Geula by then, but we have to keep working. Yes, yes, we will send links of everything. Please, Hashem. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.